Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to start working on the starboard side shear clamp. The shear clamp defines the upper outer edge of the boat. And as you can see, it has a lot of twists and bends. So I'm going to try to explain how I'm thinking through this shear clamp. A shear clamp is essentially going to be a lot like the top chine rail but on the top of the boat and it's going to be one and three quarter inches tall. Here I need to pause. While the shear clamp is one and three quarter inches square, the shear clamp should overhang the side of the boat and the top by a quarter inch. So the measurements that I'm going to show, even though it will be one and three quarter inches, it really should be a one and a half inch notch, both inward and vertically. So what I'm doing is I'm coming here with this straight edge and just saying, okay, I want to make that one and three quarter inches tall. So I put a line right there. And then I'm saying, I want it to be in total one and three quarter inches thick off the boat, but I'm gonna have a quarter inch overhang. So I'm gonna take this up to there and one and one half inches, which is there. And that's where it's gonna go. So this is one and one half inch. This here is one and three quarter inch. If I were to go one and one half inches and I do a square line, where would it hit there? So if I draw a line from there to there, what I see is this board needs to be two and one eighth inch tall. And let's review what I end up having. I'll have a board that going right up to the top of the boat here is one and three quarter inches tall, or a beam, one and three quarter inches tall. Again, the shear clamp will rise one quarter inch above the top of the boat. So that vertical dimension really should have been one and a half inches. It's gonna be one and three quarter inches wide, an inch and a half into the frame and a quarter inch overhang. But then, since I'm using this edge, this has to come down further because to have it meet up here, the whole rectangle is gonna to have to be two and one eighth inch. So you can imagine it's gonna come out here and then I'm gonna to have to sand it down. If I do the same thing here at the transom, now here at the transom, I want that board to be flush to the back of the boat. So again, what I've done is from the bottom corner up to here is one and three quarter inches tall. And what I've done is I've come in and said, I've drawn a line basically perpendicular so I get it squared off one and three quarter inches deep. And just kind of came through and said, where would this meet and be a one and three quarter inch deep board? And I get way down here and I drew that line and this will now be three and one half inches. So you can see that the shear clamp is a very different shape from the back to the front of the boat. I'll mark all of these and then I'll go through frame by frame so you can see how the size of the shear clamp is going to change throughout the boat. Here I want to show how the shape of the shear clamp is changing from the transom towards the front of the boat. Here back at the transom, the shear clamp will basically be off of this edge right here, one and three quarter, three quarter inch tall, and it will go in one and three quarter inch deep. And you can see because of the angle that it's almost three and a half inches wide as it goes into the boat. As we move forward here to frame 13 and things change, Notice that I made the correction so the shear clamp rises one quarter inch above the top of the boat and each of the notches from frames 13 to frame 1 are one and a half inches in the vertical. Now you see that the side of the boat where the shear clamp will be parallel and going in is an inch and a half. And the reason is, is the shear clamp 
needs to overhang both the side of the boat and the top will be above by a quarter inch. And that is so the planking can go on top without seeing these frames. So you see the shape there now at frame 13. Here we are at frame 12, frame 11, 10. Frame nine is the angled seat. We'll work on that one later. A little dark here, frame eight, frame seven, six, five, four, three, two. Here up at the stem, it's gonna be one and three quarters inch tall, but because of the, the flex back I have, I think I'm gonna have the shear clamp not only connect to the side, but to the back of the stem a little bit. To build up the one and three quarter inch shear clamp, I'm going to be using seven eighth inch square battens. When added together, I can make a one and three quarter inch laminate. To start estimating the angle of the cut and how this shear clamp will fit in, I'm going ahead and put a 7 8 inch by 7 8 inch batten in here and lining it up. And I back out of here, you'll see what it's going to start looking like. And with this batten sprung in place, I can really start seeing the angle at which I need to cut this forward. Similar to what Dan Lee did, on my markings, I put the batten and I clamped it. Sometimes I use screws, sometimes I use nails, but just wanted to temporarily put it in place so I could see the shape. And as I got to the front of the boat, I couldn't bend it all the way. It actually started splitting. So I got a pretty tight bend I have to make here. From the side, you can see the vertical angle at which the notches should be cut. But there's still some measurements needed to know how deep to cut the notch in the front side of the frame. I'll show you what I've done here. So I'm on frame 13 and when I put this batten in place on the back side, the batten touches the frame. So I'm gonna cut the notch an inch and a half inward and up from the bottom. And I'll get a quarter inch overhang on the top of the boat and on the side of the boat. So what I did on the front side here is I measured an inch and a half from this edge in so that it's not gonna go quite as deep because it's gonna follow the contour of this batten. Same thing is true here on frame 12. I follow that through on frame 11. And again, what it, because this batten's out, for this to keep that shape, I just don't have to cut as deep into the front as I do on the back. So this is frame 10. And now I see how it's gonna line up on frame nine, which is at an angle. So I will mark and cut those. When you start getting up to frame eight, there's a little bit of a gap, but it's pretty darn close. Frame seven, I cut it pretty much flat, frame six pretty flat, frame five pretty flat, and then it starts going the other way. Here on frame four, the gap is on the back side. So what that means is the batten wants to start curving inward. So if I cut an inch and a half in uh, here, I've actually got to cut in more on the front side. So I think that was an inch and a half plus call it maybe a quarter inch. So I got to cut in even further on the front of this. As I get to frames three, I think that's a three eighths inch gap right there. So I cut even further into the front. And the same thing is true at frame two. I'm going to use this shear clamp to help guide the shape. First, the depth of the notches, the shape of the side of the boat, and then that's how I'm going to fare the side of the boat. And once these are cut, I'll put a new batten in here because I believe then there'll be less stress and I can get a batten to come through frame. 
think I'll be able to get a fat and come through frame one up to the stem. Now it was time to cut out the notches. And as you've probably seen before, I really don't like using these hand saws. Here, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to cut these notches. I know when I use a hand saw, it's not perfect. I tried to use my mini circular saw. I thought it was gonna be really good, but I didn't do it ideally. The problem with the hand saw is I have a hard time cutting it straight at the beginning, but once I get into a groove, it seems to work really well. This tool starts well, but I can't cut very deep. So what I decided to do is I'm gonna start the grooves with this multi-tool and then finish it up with a hand saw and see how this works out. You may have noticed that I uh, cut my finger making a salad. I got that started. Now I think I feel a little bit better about putting my hand saw in here. Yeah, I'm still not perfect at that. Because I put the batten in, I'm feeling okay about the angles and everything I cut. I'm just not great with these hand saws. That worked really well. With the notches cut, I placed the first 7 8 inch square batten into the innermost section where the shear clamp will go. With the notches cut on frame 2, I can bend the batten into frame 1 and the stem. You can see here, not only does it have to bend in, I have to twist it to line up to the stem. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do all this yet. When I look at the transom, I'm not sure I wanna cut all that out and leave so little. I'm actually considering butting the first board up in here and then cutting around it but I'll have to give some thought before I do this because I could butt that one up and then cut off less of the transom and put the other three through it. So I'm gonna sleep on that. There's a guy that lives east of me that is building a quarter scale version of Temptress and he's invited me over to come take a look at his model and I really wanna look at how he's handled the shear clamp both at the front in the back of the boat. So in my next video, I'll be kind of looking at that model and then hopefully replicating it on this full-size temptress. Till next time, 
Cheers.